Margaret, in world building, what do you mean by if you make it personal, you will make it universal? I think it's so important to think about how you can make a story extremely personal and authentic to your voice for people to understand it in a greater context. I made the mistake when I first started out as a writer, thinking that I would write something that everyone would love. And, um, you know, looking at all the my favorite movies and books and everything, and trying to find a story that is pleasing to everyone. And I, I over the years, I learned that it's really when you dive deep into yourself and trying to find the stories that really make you who you are in your own life um, and drawing upon those experiences, life experiences, to make it feel genuine and personal in any story that you work on later in life. And so when I work on anything, I draw on that personal experience because anyone, you know, a, a visitor, reader, a spectator can feel that it's not authentic or genuine if it's something that's fabricated. And the more that you make it personal, I find that, you know, this is the whole phrase of write what you know. I didn't understand that until later on in life. That now I understand that that's what it means, that you have to make it personal in order for people to understand. And that it goes back to, uh, you know, what makes us human, the universal human truths that we all share, we all love, hate, we understand revenge and envy and jealousy and all of these things, but we all experience it in different worlds and contexts with different people in our lives and you know different situations. But when you make it personal and you draw on something that is extremely felt um, in your own way and you're able to express that and manifest that into a story that is extremely personal to you, then I believe it is universal to anyone who experiences it. Margaret, what's the three second rule that you refer to in your new book? So the three second rule is if you're creating a world or um, an immersive experience, if your audience member doesn't understand the world they're in in three seconds or less, then you have not successfully um, suspended their disbelief. And this idea came, uh, you know, the first time I heard it was uh, a story about George Lucas when he was creating his, um, the Star Wars universe, is that when an audience member looks at a Star Wars world and if it doesn't feel, and he was creating it, you know, if it doesn't feel like something that belonged in the world he was creating, then it does not belong. Um, so it was a really interesting way to look at the world that you're creating to make sure that it's consistent throughout um, your whole experience. And if you're creating something that is truly immersive, then it should feel immersive from every to every single detail from beginning to end. And it should be, it should all speak, uh, you know, in the same, you know, it should feel like it belongs in the same world. Um, it should feel like it, isn't jarring or that it's out of context or it breaks the pattern of your world. It's a way for the audience to connect the dots and continue that journey and that believability that they are living in this or stepping into this immersive world. So it's a really great way for you to look at the world that you're creating, whether it's in a video game or, a, or a, an experience, a physical experience, if you have someone walk in and look at a place and in three seconds, if they don't tell you exactly what you're trying to build, then you need to get back to work. You need to figure out a way that it can be because our minds work so fast and we easily break the world all the time um, as visitors and participants to an experience that you want to ensure that you never give your audience member or visitor an opportunity to break out of your world. And so 
try the three second rule to uh, create an experience and a story that is truly immersive. So three seconds, that's almost like a couple blinks mm -hmm. of an eye. Yeah, yeah, that's how quickly you uh, absorb the environment that you're in. I mean, this is a survival skill, right? That we as human beings, like we know that we're in a safe place and a dangerous place is a fight and flight response, um, fight or flight. And so for us to quickly make sense of our environment and our surroundings is something that we as humans evolved to do. So, you know, in three seconds or less, if you know where you are and you can quickly make sense of things, then you feel safe. And when you have that safety, then you're willing to play, then you're willing to engage. So you have to create that safety net first. Um, and that's something that is extremely important in world building. Because if you really want to take it back, what is it, Maslow's hierarchy yeah, of needs? Yeah, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, exactly. Yeah, so, so security, safety, I'm mm -hmm. not sure where they fall on that scale. Oh yeah, that's the most basic thing, right? That you feel um, safe, that your life isn't threatened. And then from there, you're able to enjoy the luxuries and the pleasures of life. So um, once you create that safety net of knowing that, you know, you're, and that's why like when you, we create any type of immersive experiences, we always start with um, the, uh, the world, the, uh, the rules or the um, rules of engagement. So, you know, you say things like, um, you know, please ensure that you, uh, you know, whatever it is, keep to the path, you know, don't touch this or whatever, so that you have that sense of safety before you enter the world. And that's one thing, right? To create those um, parameters, those uh, safety guardrails, if you will, the pool rules, the swim pool rules. And once you enter that experience, how do you create um, that next step of once you've established that safety, that you can enter a place and feel safe in those three seconds as well, you know? Um, and from there, you know, unless you have, you're building a horror house, which you, you don't wanna feel safe, right? You wanna be terrified and scared and running for your life. But in any other situation where you want people to play and engage, you have to ensure that they feel safe first and foremost um, to interact with others, to play, to engage, to discover, to explore, can they open drawers? Um, but having that, rule of the, the three second rule of looking around and quickly figuring out, okay, this is a, this is a place that I can quickly, um, you know, in my mind, know that I'm in a, in this world, I'm immersed in it. I'm safe to do the things that I'm supposed to do is a really great way for you to win your audience, uh, immediately when they start the experience. In your book, Immersive Storytelling, I think it was further in, page 186 or so, you say, as humans, we need to have idle time and occasionally be bored mm. and unproductive. Yes. And I love hearing that because I think a lot of times as creative people, we feel like, I'm not inspired today. Yeah. There must be something wrong. Like, why, why can't I do something creative? Yeah. I believe in being bored and unproductive wholeheartedly. I think that, you know, when we really think back to, um, you know, at least for me in my time being a kid and not, and feeling that boredom and not having anything to do. Um, that's really when I, you know, pulled out the blank sheet of paper, when I took my, the felt and my scissors and glue and started creating things and making things um, and really trying to going, learning about that creative process. And whether it was good or bad, it didn't matter. I just wanted to create. And as you get older, you start, you know, editing yourself and like judging yourself before you even create the thing. And then you quit or you stop because it's not great. Or, you know, you think that someone else does it better, or all, you know, all these things. But I think that being bored and unproductive um, is a great way to quiet your mind and to reset and to shut out all the other voices that's telling you what you should be doing, what you should be creating. And when you're bored and unproductive, you'll be surprised to hear, you know, your inner voice, your inner artist about, uh, and your inner creative about what's meaningful to you. You know, when you stop 
hearing other people's opinions and um, perspective on what you should be doing in your, in your life or what project you should be working on next and all this. And I think that um, during the pandemic and when we were isolating and in our homes, that was something that I experienced in, you know, very, um, uh, in an in its extreme form, like all of us, that we are locked into our houses, we couldn't do anything about it, we were bored out of our, mi out of our minds, and we wanted to do something again. And for me personally, it felt like I needed to had have that reset button to realize what is important to me, what's still important to me, what's no longer important to me, right? And being bored and an unproductive helps you to really um, have that open space in your mind to accept what comes in. And you'll be surprised, you know, you'll be surprised by what does enter your mind and your imagination when you're not constantly inundated with noise and chatter and uh, distractions. And so uh, I recommend everyone be bored and unproductive at least one day out of the week. <laughs> I think that's a problem for some people because uh, overscheduling is its own form of addiction. Yeah. And so I think they feel like I'm not being good if I don't have like all these things that I have lined up. Yeah. Like there's something wrong with me. Oh, yeah. And it's a constant sh struggle for me too, you know, because especially, uh, you know, living in L.A., is also, I remember when I first moved to LA, people are like, you know, rushing from one thing to the next. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't have that much to do. You know, I actually have time to sit around here for two hours and have lunch. But people were rushing from one thing to the next and it affected me, you know, over the years. I'm like, oh, I have to be busy too. I have to be productive. I have to work on five to six projects at a time like everyone else. Because that way, um, that's how I would want the world to perceive me as a very productive, creative, or, or you know, writer or artist. And after a while, I realize, well, who am I doing this for? And you know, if if it is to please others, then that is definitely not my priority. Um, because life is short, and we need to do the the things that we ultimately are meant to do in this world and in this lifetime. So being bored and unproductive once in a while, I'm not saying all the time, right? Because we all need to, you know, do our things to earn money and, you know, whatever it is we do. Um, but it's, it's a really great reminder, at least, to know that you don't always have to be productive as a human being, as an individual, that you need time to rest. You need time to, uh, fill your well, because that's something that, you know, as a creative, I just need to walk around. You know, I need to take a hike. I need to do my yoga. I need to maybe walk around in a museum without any goals at all and wander and get lost and not have a destination and maybe let someone else plan something for me for a while, you know, um, and just let go of all of those expectations just for a while, you know, to have your mind refresh itself and to really, um, you know, think about what's, um, you know, what the most important things to you will surprisingly come to mind. Um, because, you know, oftentimes I think we clutter our minds and our lives. And some people do that, in, you know, and manifest in actual things like when they when people start cluttering their houses and things like that, right? Um, it's the same thing with our mind. And the more you let in, the more you perhaps start to lose what makes you, you. And there's never going to be another you in this lifetime or in this, you know, in, in the history of humankind. So uh, why not? Why not just, you know, let yourself um, be unproductive, not do anything so that you can listen to your inner voice to tell you what it is that you need to do or not do. I think it's a really great way to gain perspective on your life and it's something that you need to occasionally do. 
in your life. 